Hey everyone, this is Inka, and in this video, I will only be making foods from Pixar films for 24 hours. First things first, welcome to About to Eat. We're all so excited about this channel launch. As most of you know, I've been doing a lot of these 24 hour cooking challenges, mostly the color foods ones, but I've also done some pop culture themed ones, like when I did the one with Disney princess foods or the one with Studio Ghibli, which was so fun. Today is kind of a continuation of that. Pixar films, I would probably say they are my favorite films in the universe. Still makes me cry a lot. I am really, really, really looking forward to this. I'll be featuring, I think, some of my favorite Pixar shorts and films. So if we're all ready now, let's get started on breakfast. Ready to make our first meal, which will be the bao from the short bao. This just had to be the one for me. It was very touching in a lot of ways. My mom actually made some bao with me a couple months ago when she was here. It was such a lovely experience. In Chinese culture especially, food and family is just so intertwined together. When my mom calls me, she doesn't say, how are you doing? She says, have you eaten yet? So I did also think about doing some of the other buns and breads that you see when the mom goes to the bakery in Chinatown. Pineapple bun, barbecue pork bun, lao po bing, which is a chewy flaky pastry. But I do feel like bao is the one that I should go with. It is actually a very commonly enjoyed breakfast food, especially in Taiwan, as you guys might have seen in that Worth It episode where we went to Liu Mama's dumpling place and had those amazing pork buns. Ugh, so good. So here's what I have for ingredients. Ground pork for the filling, minced ginger, some cilantro, some scallions, and a little bit of cabbage. Our family generally likes to put some cabbage in our dumpling fillings and bao fillings. First thing I'm gonna do is actually adding some water into my ground pork and mixing it clockwise in the same direction. This is supposed to help make the pork more tender because you're essentially giving it moisture, make it stickier. So then later on when we make the filling, it won't like fall apart. I'm gonna do this for quite a while as well. Now that it is reasonably stickier. I'm gonna add in the ginger, which will help with that porky flavor, make it less gamey. The same thing with the cilantro here. Rice wine, mixing that in. It's starting to smell good already. So now I'm gonna go ahead and chop up my scallions. The word bao in itself, baozi is like buns. If you pronounce it in a slightly different intonation. Bao actually means treasure. Zhu bao is like jewelry. Bao bei is like baby. My parents sometimes call their kids that. That's why bao in itself just means so much. Stir that up. I do think that my ground pork is a little on the leaner side, so I'm just gonna add a little bit more oil here. Adding in some soy sauce, some white pepper, sugar. Looking more and more like it. Last thing now would be to add in the cabbage. Toss that back into the pork. Just incorporating it. This is a familiar smell. Reminds me of home. So now that the filling is ready, I'm just going to wrap it up. And get started on working the dough. I'm just doing my usual recipe for the bao dough. Warm water flour, yeast, mixing that, we have the dough forming. Now for the kneading part, I feel like even this making of process makes me very homesick. Growing up and watching my grandpa do this, my mom do this, and now I'm continuing on the legacy. This is something that you do put a lot of time and effort and patience in. Maybe that's why we always refer to our dough babies as exactly that. There we go, my little bow baby. This is like mini bows, but look at how baby smooth it is. I'm just gonna roll it out and divide it up. Looks like a dumpling wrapper, but it's a bow wrapper. Take a generous scoop. This is the trickiest part. We have to pleat it. Pull it up and pleat, pull it up and pleat. It is not by any means a perfect bun. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my little bow child into the steamer, cover him up. I'm gonna proof it before I steam it and see if he's grown a little bit. The bow is done. I let it rest after steaming it for a little bit. Moment of truth, child, please be okay. My little bow bay, bow bee. Seeing this little guy come out like this, I feel pretty happy. I'm just gonna go straight to eating it. I already have some hot tea here, some oolong tea. I'm gonna just take a big bite. And he's like a nice size too. 
I'm gonna draw a little smiley face on here. Mmm. Mmm. It was a good amount of filling. There's a lot of flavor in there. The skin is like, it's not too thick, which is perfect. This is so good. I also just realized I ate my kid with zero hesitation. I am so sorry. This really brings back so much memories. Eating with family, remembering how we all made it together. What a great way to start off the day. Also so thankful that Bao was showcased in such an amazing Pixar film. I almost finished it already. I'm gonna sip up my tea, enjoy the snow outside, and then I'll check back in. So it's not too long after breakfast, but I need to get started on lunch because once again, I'm making more dough. I am going to make the broccoli pizza from inside out. I know they definitely don't try to make it seem appealing considering how much Riley hates it. But for some reason, when I think of inside out, one of my top Pixar films of all time, I think of broccoli pizza. I wanna make it for myself and try it and see if it is worthy of a joy emotion or disgust. With that being said though, I do wanna try and make it a little more appetizing. Something like a three to four cheese broccoli pizza with some sort of white sauce. And to talk a little more about the cheese, here's some of what I have. Provolone over here, some shredded mozzarella, Parmigiano Reggiano, and of course, the broccoli. The first thing I'm gonna do now is work on the pizza dough. I've gone ahead and put in some sugar, flour, and salt. Add in some oil, yeast mixture. Pour it in super carefully. We're just making dough all day. Trying to get the shaggy dough. I'm gonna go in with my hands. I'm gonna try and just form a dough ball. Continue kneading until it forms a smooth ball. Lots of work in my arm today. Pretty much there now. So similar to a bao dough. Just going to let this sit for an hour. And in the meantime, I can put my other things. I'm gonna get started on my Alfredo base. That little yellow bowl, that's my broccoli that I just prepared and cut up. I'm gonna add in my butter, garlic, heavy cream. Also adding in a knob of cream cheese. I'm just trying to add things to make it taste good. Like I'm trying to prove a point. It doesn't look super amazing yet, but once it thickens, I think it's going to complement my broccoli pizza really well. Pizza dough's expanded to twice its size now. It's been like a little over an hour. Almost time for lunch, so we're going to do that little test. Ooh -hoo -hoo. It's always the most satisfying thing. And I'm just going to roll it out. This is going to be really big. Here we have it. I'm gonna go grab my baking sheet now out of the oven. It's gonna be so hot. There you go. It's so hot. It smells really good already. Add my cheese. Just like that. Parmesan cheese. Good amount of cheese. I feel like there's already way too much stuff going on. Also, my broccoli here, the most important part of this dish. I've added in some oil and salt and pepper. Riley's gonna hate me, but eat your vegetables. The broccoli pizza is done. This is what it looks like right now. I can totally understand why a kid wouldn't like this. It smells like garlic, creamy. I gotta show you the pizza. I just pulled it out of the oven. It looks incredible. Wow. Can you hear it? It's like crispy. And then the cheesy goodness. Even the broccoli looks really good. I wasn't even that hungry to begin with, but now I'm like starving. Riley, or whoever made Riley, if you're watching this, I hope this changes your mind. Ooh -hoo -hoo. Look at this. I should probably go sit down, but I also don't want to wait any longer because it, it's hot. I'm not even going to go grab a drink. I'm just going to eat it. This is actually really good. This sauce was such a good idea. The broccolis have been roasted to a point where it's like softened. There's like three different kinds of cheese and this crust. It's like the golden crust. Broccoli pizza rocks. Or maybe it just means I'm old. I literally finished this slice so fast. Everybody should try to make this at home. I have to promise myself I won't eat the whole pizza. I'm only gonna eat two slices. Otherwise, I won't have stomach space for dinner. And dinner is going to be epic. I am back in the kitchen again. I have my hair tied up because it is time to go into what is probably the most iconic 
Pixar dish. I thought about not doing it because it's been so overdone, but it's also just something I've wanted to do for a long time. So for dinner today, I will be making the ratatouille from the movie ratatouille. I'm always going to remember that shot when Anton Ego took that first bite of the ratatouille. A really cool thing about this movie is how the Pixar team actually worked with Thomas Keller as a culinary consultant and that's why so many of the things that you see in the film are so accurate behind the scenes of what life is like in the kitchen, the dishes you see, and of course the creation of this particular ratatouille dish. But that's also why the ratatouille we see in the movie is actually not your traditional old school ratatouille. Rather, it's what we call a confit bialdi, which is Chef Thomas Keller's interpretation of a fancier ratatouille. Always wanted to recreate this scene, so let me get started. I'm gonna make the piperade with a bunch of peppers, tomatoes, and onions, because that's the first like red colored sauce we see being layered in the pan. So I'm just going to slice these up. You almost want to char these. Gonna pop it in the oven. While the red pepper's roasting, I'm gonna prepare my vegetables. I have zucchini, yellow squash, tomato, and I also have a very big Eggplant, which is a little troublesome because you do want the slices to be uniform, but I'm gonna do what I can. You wanna super thinly slice these. I decided to get a mandolin to help me. The only thing is these things are terrifying. So I also bought gloves, which are recommended if you're gonna use these. Better safe than sorry. It is so thin and beautiful. I just need to make sure I don't get too excited. If you see how thin that is, that's insane. Take a look at this eggplant and then at the zucchini. Ugh. I'll find a way to make it happen. And that's it. So here's what I have now. Now I think my red peppers are almost done. So I'm gonna take them out. These are looking beautiful. It's just very hot to the touch right now. Whew. Once you roast it a little bit, the skin comes off so easy. Now I'm gonna let these cool a little bit while I start working on my tomatoes. There's some onion, garlic, tomatoes. I also put in some parsley, thyme. Almost done at this point. It's been reduced. Toss it into my chopped peppers. Give it a good toss. Blend it up. All right. Mmm, very fresh. This is now ready. Now to do the plating. So to start with, I'm gonna layer on my sauce, spreading it fully. This is gonna be so good. Start building it. Just looking at the picture for reference here. It's so cute. It's like a little portion, a one person portion. I just wanna dress it up a little bit more. Finish it off now with some thyme and garlic. Now for the last part, when you're so excited right now. Parchment paper on top. Now we're ready to pop this guy in the oven. It's gonna be like two hours though. I can't wait for you guys to see the finished product. I'm back and I have changed out of my sauce covered shirt and the ratatouille is now done. It smells wonderful. Peel this off. Look at that. The colors are a little less vibrant now. I'm just going to very carefully plate it and then dinner will be ready. Many hours later, the ratatouille is done. Ta -da. This looks so good. The circle of sauce you see around the side, that's actually the vinaigrette, which was pretty much just some piperade, some balsamic vinegar, oil, and thyme. The plating, I tried to match it as best as I could. My vegetables aren't standing as upright as I would like them to. They got really tender in the oven. I could have taken it out earlier, but then you won't get as much of that like wonderful melt in your mouth texture. I have some wine with me. Let me give this a try. I did not grow up eating ratatouille, so there are no attachments there in terms of memory, but I love how because it's so thinly sliced, every slice is like super tender, literally paper thin. You don't even really need to chew on it too much. I can almost feel it melting in my mouth, which is such a wonderful experience. Remember that freshness? It really comes through that like natural sweetness of the vegetable. I love this vinaigrette. I love how it's like slightly acidic, 
Wow. Portion size is a little small, I would say, but that's fairly normal, I think, at a fine dining restaurant. I'm sure it's not the only thing he ate. The other thing I wanted to say, though, is that I don't think it's too realistic for them to serve this to Anton, mainly because this took me like two hours to roast in the oven. Maybe they just have a different method of doing it, but otherwise, this was fantastic. Pretty much already done with my ratatouille. I feel like this is just enough to hold me over until dessert, which I am very looking forward to. Check back in real soon. It hasn't been too long after dinner, but I am really craving something sweet. What I'm eating for dessert is actually the butter brickle ice cream that Russell talks about in Up. So there's actually this part in Up where Russell shares with Carl that him and his dad used to go get ice cream together. His dad would get the butter brickle ice cream and he would get the chocolate ice cream at Fenton's. And Fenton's Creamery is an actual ice cream store in San Francisco. They actually do have the butter brickle flavor mentioned and Carl and Russell actually eat it together at the very end of the movie. I thought it was really sweet. And I'm also just very curious about this butter brickle flavor because I've never had it before. But it's actually a chocolate coated toffee that was first sold in America like back in the 1920s. And as a fun fact, the original butter brickle formula was actually sold later on and we still get to taste it now in the form of Heath bars. Except these are actually Heath bits of brickle English toffee bits. Super crunchy. And so yesterday, I actually got started making the toffee slash caramel syrup, which was basically a heavy cream, butter, light brown sugar. I feel like my kitchen ended up smelling like a candy factory, but basically once the syrup cooled down, it just became like a very soft liquidy caramel, which was absolutely wonderful. And then I also made an ice cream base using half and half as my cream base and then adding in some sugar, butter. I also added in a bunch of salt to help with the sweetness. The next thing was really to mix both of those together, make sure they were incorporated and then chill them again before I combined them with some heavy whipping cream into my ice cream maker. And then basically once the ice cream was almost formed, that's when I added a good heaping cup of Heath butter brickle bits. I may have added a little more than I should. And then I just put it in a container and I popped it in my freezer. Now that it's been able to chill overnight, time to give it a taste. I may have also bought some ice cream cones because that's how Carl eats it. So I'm gonna scoop my ice cream in here. Ooh. Ooh, look at that. Will you look at that? Goop going in. It smells like toffee, it smells wonderful. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. I think in general, I just love the idea of incorporating toffee bits into desserts. In ice cream, it works so wonderfully well. If you like flavors like brown butter, toffee, caramel, you are going to love this. It has been a wonderful 24 hours. I think everything I had today was just better than expected forever gonna be a huge pixar fan i hope you guys enjoy this too and i'll see you guys soon bye